Bethesda released a new update to the Creation Club yesterday. This was easy to miss because on the same day, they released Patch 7 for Fallout 76, which I already covered in a live stream that you can watch here. This update doesn't add any new creations, but instead it improves a bunch of existing creations, adding brand new build stuff and improving weapons and armor. These updates and improvements of course don't cost anything for players who have already purchased the creation. So let's hop on in and see what's changed. First, there is a rather large update to the Slocum's Joe creation. In the last version, the Slocum's Joe creation came with only one ceiling tile. It had a dirty ceiling tile look going on. The update provides a brand new ceiling and roof piece with a fluorescent light embedded in the middle of it. The light requires ambient power, so as long as we snap it in place next to a power source, it automatically turns on. Here is the new ceiling fluorescent light tile right next to the old tile with the ceiling lamp. There is a known issue with this ceiling tile. At the moment, you can't place anything on top of it. Here I am on the roof of my Slocum's Joe coffee shop. We've got this cool donut statue, and it works fine on the roof in many places, but when I try to put it on top of the new ceiling tile, we get a big red border. Of course, we can get around this with mods, using a mod like Place Everywhere to remove the red border from the game entirely, but Bethesda released patch notes saying that they're aware of the issue and they're working on a fix. Next is a pretty big update for the Modern Furniture Workshop Pack. This is a huge improvement. The Modern Furniture Workshop Pack came with wonderful floor tiles, but nothing for walls and ceilings. This update gives us six new wall tiles. There's a paneled wall, a plaster wall, a brown stone wall, a gray stone wall, a brown wooden wall, and a natural wooden wall. They don't look very wastelandy, but they fit the purpose of the creation well, which is to allow us to create a beautiful, clean, modern-looking home. For the exterior part of the wall, both the paneled and plaster walls share a plastered stucco texture. The others are double-sided, having the same texture on either side. All six of these wall tiles come with a windowed variant. And it's not just a big rectangular hole to the outside. These windows come complete with a panel of glass and a windowsill. These new walls also come as doorways, each one with space for a door in the middle of the tile. And that brings us to the next addition with this creation, and that's three brand new doors. These are beautiful little doors, one in a sort of distressed teal wood color, another in orange painted wood, and the last one is a natural wooden color. All three doors have thin rectangular windows in them. And finally, the update includes three new ceiling tiles. A dark wooden ceiling to match the dark wood wall, a natural wooden ceiling to match the natural wooden wall, and a paneled ceiling to match the paneled wall. This update is pretty great for those trying to make a beautiful downtown Boston apartment or a mid-century executive's office. We now have all of the indoor tile pieces that we need and I tested it, you can place stuff on the roofs. So, working as intended. The rest of the updates are all minor updates to weapons and armor. Starting with the Doom Marine armor, we find three new paint schemes. As you know, it comes in the traditional Doom Green, but there's a brand new brown paint scheme, a gray paint scheme, and a red paint scheme each of which costs one oil to apply. The update also includes the ability to modify the armor to improve protection and rad resistance. It's kind of like Ballistic Weave, but it's not Ballistic Weave. We find a mod section that allows us to upgrade the Doom armor to Armored Mark 1, 2, 3, and 4. It doesn't cost Ballistic Weave. Instead, these new armored upgrades consume adhesive, fiberglass, and steel. Each upgrade improves damage and energy resistance by 30 each, except the final upgrade, which only improves each by 20. But none of these tiers improves radiation resistance at all. Radiation resistance is still stuck at 10. But there's a new lining, a rad resist lining, and each level of the radiation resistance lining improves radiation resistance by 20. When fully upgraded, we get a pretty viable piece of armor. 
Then they added a small update to the Chinese stealth armor, allowing it to be modified with Ballistic Weave. And it accepts Institute Killer Weave. We can upgrade it all the way to Mark V, dramatically improving its ballistic and energy damage resistance. This turns the Chinese stealth armor into a viable piece of armor. I mean, it was great before if you never got caught, but if you did, you were essentially wearing paper. Now we can upgrade it so that even if we do get caught, we've got time to react. They included a similar update to the Morgan's spacesuit. The spacesuit still has an incredible amount of radiation resistance, and we can upgrade it to every level of ballistic weave, just like the Chinese stealth armor. You know how I feel about crossover armor and weapons from other games. But that said, it does look good, and now it's a viable piece of armor. Now, the patch notes also say that the pint-sized slasher outfit also now accepts ballistic weave. However, when I updated my creations, I didn't see an update available for for the pint-sized slasher outfit, and when I inspected the outfit in the game, it did not accept Ballistic Weave. So perhaps they're planning on an update to the pint-sized slasher outfit, but they had to push it until the next release. Maybe we can expect that in the near future. They also updated the Hellfire Power Armor, adding a rare chance for enemies in the wasteland to spawn wearing the armor, or for Hellfire Power Armor to spawn on Power Armor frames throughout the world. I don't know how rare they mean by rare, but I went to Gunners Plaza, Hub City Auto Wreckers, and the ruins of Quincy, where I knew power armor wearing gunners would spawn, and I never found a suit. So I'm thinking it's pretty rare. But the great news about this update is it does mean that we can now get more than one suit of power armor, making it possible to equip multiple companions in a full suit of Hellfire power armor. So the final update is to the prototype Gauss rifle. And this, I think, is my favorite update, this update produces a new glowing muzzle flash effect around the barrel when firing. It's really brief, but every time we fire the weapon, big arcs of electricity crackle along the barrel. Here it is paused mid-animation. It just lights the barrel up, making it look pretty good, especially at night. I worry about using this as a sniper rifle. I'm sure gunners would put two and two together when their troops start dropping like flies and there's this conspicuous blue flash off in the distance, but it looks great and makes the Gauss rifle a whole lot more fun. And that's it for all of the recent updates. It's March and Bethesda hasn't published any new creations to the Creation Club this year. I believe the last new addition was the holiday pack that came out around Christmas. But perhaps this update is a good sign that they have a whole bunch of new stuff in store for us. Thanks for watching, everybody. This is a shorter episode today because I'm knee-deep in production working on a new Fallout 2 video. So stay tuned. If you don't want to miss what I have next for you, be sure to subscribe and to click that bell notification button. If you have and you still feel like you're missing out on notifications, consider following me on Twitter at Oxhorn. I update Twitter manually with every new piece of content that I publish. I have a shirt shop with completely unique designs that you can't find anywhere else. My designs come on shirts in a variety of men's, women's, and children's sizes, and in a wide array of colors. They come on other products as well, like smartphone cases, pillows, posters, mugs, stickers, prints, etc. So if interested, you can find a link to my shop in the description below, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming a patron on Patreon or a member here on YouTube. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you soon with more brand new videos.